Welcome back to our study of networks and distributed systems based on the textbook by Jim Carose and Keith Ross, Computer Networking, a Top-Down Approach. We're in the process of discussing random access protocols and we will start with a discussion of the Aloha protocols. So let's proceed. In this section, we will describe a few of the most commonly used random access protocols, the Aloha protocols and the Carrier Sense Multiple Access protocols, generally abbreviated as CSMA. Ethernet is a popular, widely deployed CSMA protocol. In our description of slotted Aloha, we assume the following. All frames are the same size. Time is divided into equal size slots, which equals the number of bits in a frame divided by the bit rate of the channel. In other words, a slot equals the time to transmit one frame. Nodes start to transmit frames only at the beginning of slots. And nodes are synchronized so that each node knows when a slot begins. If two or more frames collide in a slot, then all the nodes detect the collision event before the slot ends. Let P be a probability, that is a number between 0 and 1. In other words, this would be a random number. The operation of a slotted LOHA in each node is simple. When the node has a fresh frame to send, it waits until the beginning of the next slot and transmits the entire frame in the slot. If there is not a collision, the node has successfully transmitted its frames and does not need to transmit the frame again. The node can prepare a new frame for transmission if it has one. On the other hand, if there is a collision, the node detects the collision before the end of the slot. The node retransmits its frame in each subsequent slot with the probability P until the frame is transmitted without a collision. Retransmitting with the probability P, we mean that the node is uh, effectively tossing a coin. Heads correspond to retransmit, which occurs with the probability P, and tail corresponds to skip the slot and toss the coin again in the next slot, which occurs with a probability of 1 minus P. All nodes involved in the collision toss their coins independently. Slotted Aloha would appear to have many advantages. Unlike channel partitioning, Slotted Aloha allows a node to transmit continuously at full rate when the node is the only active node. A node is said to be active if it has frames to send. Slotted Aloha is also highly decentralized because each node detects collisions and independently decides when to retransmit. Slotted Aloha does, however, require the slots to be synchronized in the nodes. Soon we'll discuss the unslotted version of Aloha and as, as well as uh, the carrier sense multiple access protocols, none of which require such synchronization. Slotted Aloha is also extremely simple. Slotted Aloha works well when there is only one active node, but is not necessarily that efficient when there are multiple active nodes. There are two possible efficiency concerns here. First, as you see in figure 5.10, when there are multiple active nodes, a certain fraction of the slots will have collisions and will therefore be wasted. The second concern is that another fraction of the slots will be empty because all nodes refrain from transmitting because of the probabilistic transmission policy. The only unwasted slots will be those in which exactly one node transmits. A slot in which exactly one node transmits is said to be a successful slot. The efficiency of a slotted multiple access protocol is defined to be the long run fraction of successful slots in the case when there is a large number of active nodes, each always having a large number of frames to send. Be sure to note that if no form 
of access control were used, and each node were to immediately retransmit after each collision, the efficiency would be zero. Slotted Aloha clearly increases the efficiency beyond zero, but the question is just how much. As you can see in this slide, efficiency is long run fraction of successful slots. And given the formula that you see displayed here for calculating that towing cost, at best the channel is only used for useful transmissions 37% of the time. The slotted Aloha protocol required that all nodes synchronize their transmissions to start at the beginning of a slot. The first Aloha protocol was an unslotted and fully decentralized protocol. In pure Aloha, when a frame first arrives, that is a network datagram is passed down from the network layer at the sending node, the node immediately transmits the frame in its entirety into the broadcast channel. If a transmitted frame experiences a collision with one or more other transmissions, the node will then immediately retransmit the frame with a probabilistic P. Otherwise, the node waits for a frame transmission time. After this wait, it then retransmits the frame with probability P or waits for another time frame with a probability of 1 minus P. The efficiency of unslotted Aloha is even worse than that 37% of slotted Aloha. In both slotted and pure Aloha, a node's decision to transmit is made independently of the activity or the other nodes attached to the broadcast channel. A node pays no attention to whether another node happens to be transmitting when it begins to transmit, nor stops transmitting if another node begins to interfere with its transmission. As human beings, we have human protocols that allow us to behave better and also decrease the amount of time spent colliding with each other in conversation and therefore to increase the amount of data we exchange in our conversations. Specifically, there are two important rules for polite human conversation. Listen before speaking. If someone else is speaking, wait until they're finished. In the network world, this is called carrier sensing. A node listens to the channel before transmitting. If a frame from another node is currently being transmitted into the channel, a node then waits until it detects no transmissions for a short amount of time and then begins transmission. Another one of those human rules is that if someone else begins talking at the same time, stop talking. In the networking world, this is called collision detection. A transmitting node listens to the channel while it's transmitting. If it detects that another node is transmitting an interfering frame, it stops transmitting and waits a random amount of time before repeating that since and if idle transmit again cycle. These two rules are embodied in the family of carrier sense multiple access protocols and the carrier sense with multiple access with collision detection protocols. That's two variations of carrier sense with multiple access. If all nodes perform carrier sensing, why do collisions occur in the first place? After all, a node will refrain from transmitting whenever it senses that another node is transmitting. The answer to this question can be best illustrated by using the space-time diagrams. Figure 5.12 shows a space-time diagram for four nodes, A, B, C, and D, attached to a linear broadcast bus.
The horizontal axis shows the position of each node in space. The vertical axis represents time. At time t0, node b senses the idle is channeled. No other nodes are currently transmitting, so node B begins transmitting with its bits propagating in both directions along the broadcast medium. The downward propagation of B's bits in figure 5.12 with increase in time indicates that a non-zero amount of time is needed for B's bits to propagate along the broadcast medium. Node D has a frame to send. Although node B is currently transmitting, the bits being transmitted by B have yet to reach D, and therefore D senses that the channel is idle. In accordance with the CSMA protocol, D begins transmitting its frame. A short time later, B's transmission begins to interfere with D's transmission at D. In figure 512, it's evident that the end-to-end -end channel propagation delay of a broadcast channel, that is the time it takes for a signal to propagate from one of the nodes to another, will impact its performance. The longer this propagation delay, the larger the chance that a carrier sensing node is not yet able to sense a transmission that has already begun at another node in the network. We're about to discuss carrier sensing multiple access with collision detection, which will lead us right into the Ethernet discussion. So why don't we take a break here to give you a chance to update your notes on the Aloha protocols. And when you're prepared, come on back and we'll begin the next one.